It's been tucked in. So one interaction we had with someone, she, she was actually a police, police, police woman, and we asked if she wanted to be featured in the project, and she says, she said, unfortunately I can't because of my position, and being featured in the project could jeopardize my work. And I asked her, okay, I mean, completely fine. I asked her, um, what does it mean to, for you to be a woman in America? You know, being a woman cop. And she says, constantly proving myself. And I asked her, um, why, why did you answer that question? Why did you answer that way? And she said, <clears throat> she said because she's in a field where men are dominant, and she is a, is a cycle is a, what's it called? She rides a motorcycle. So she said she had to, she had to work very very hard to prove that she was actually worthy, and now she is in the division. She still has to prove herself to her equal employees, and that to me, and, and I'm just like the URC project again. Just like those interactions will always live with me because I'm always re I'm reminded over and over again that people individuals are fighting for their place. So on May. 2016, Beth and I, Beth, she's my girlfriend at the time, she's now my amazing wife. We were talking about society. We we're talking about how can people be encouraged and what it, what that looked like. And I had suggested her that I was had this had this idea of printing out business cards and handing it to people with some words of encouragement. At midnight, Beth and I ended up coming up with a script. And we filmed us recording, filmed us saying the script. And the script went something like this. Hi, you are seen. You are valuable. Who you are, no one else can be. You are your own type of beauty. Your perspective matters. Now take this card and share with someone. They're worth it. The first place that I handed the business cards was in Manhattan. I was there for a trip, my little brother, and I was working. I was like, hey, this would be a good place to start the URC project. As I was passing it out in New York, Beth, she was in Boston, and started passing them out as well. We wanted to be specific on who we handed the business card to because we wanted them to be feel valued. We wanted them to be encouraged and also to share it with someone because that, that was the whole intention of making sure that we're able to give something and then someone passes it on. Let this trickle down. We didn't hand out all 400 business cards. I know Beth probably still has the cards in her purse. So late November, early December, that's when the URC project evolved to Beth and I walking around with our Polaroid and taking pictures of strangers that we found interesting and asking them just questions. The reason why we included the Polaroid is because I wanted to capture something. <laughs> I, I thought the business card was a good idea for, for, for to begin with, but then my mind just started think expanding and thinking bigger of, hey, I'll actually, I want more of an interaction with individuals. And I want to capture it in a way that is, in a way that is going to last. The URC project was divided into three different volumes. The first volume, we asked the question, if you could broadcast one message to the world, what would it be? Second volume, we asked the question, what does it mean to be a woman in America? The third volume, we asked the question, what would you tell someone that looks different than you? One of my main thoughts is how I really appreciated the individuality that was displayed. That's always something that I love, the complexity and the beauty of one human being and how it mirrors yet is different than everybody else. <laughs> so it was really beautiful to see common themes of answers to the questions we asked as well as the differences and the response the physical response of the person. I, I, I can remember certain facial expressions 
And I think about that because I think about the non-verbal communication that came with the verbal communication and that there was a part of that non-verbal communication that we were able to capture by taking a picture. It actually communicated something else, right? It's like taking a different scope, a different kind of yeah, scope onto this big questions, these big questions that we asked people. Every interaction we had, they had different answers. There was this one person that we met when we when I asked them, hey, this is the project we're doing, and the question that we're asking was, if you could broadcast one message to the world, what would it be? I took a picture of him with the Polaroid, and he smiled, he loved the photo, and his answer was, listen, no, it said, it said his answer was, focus more on what a person's trying to say instead of what you want them to say. And that really touched me. Out of all the things that, that he could broadcast to the world, this is the message that he wanted to share with the world. This kind of started the ball rolling forward. The second volume came to being when Beth and I discovered that there was a women's march happening down our street in Boston. We wanted to capture it and to just see people's, people's take on it. So we took the Polaroid and Beth talked about the question. She said, it would be a good idea to go and ask women, what, would it, what does it mean to be a woman in America? And specifically for that individual that we, that we would interact with. One person, when I asked her, what does it mean to be a woman in America? And she says, being a fighter. I never thought that that a white woman would say that she's fighting. Because the narrative that, that I've always been told is that black people are fighting more. That people that are not white, they're constantly fighting for their voices to be heard. They're constantly fighting for their seat in the table. And then, yeah, and their seat for the table. So when she said that she's a fighter, for me, I started seeing that, hey, she's also, she's also fighting for a seat. She's also fighting for her voice to be heard. At the end of the day, everyone is fighting, fighting to the lawn. And, and that to me, I was like, man, this project became more than just, let me couch it for stories. I think it, for me, at that moment, I started seeing that the URC was capturing humanity's take, well, it, it, individuals' take within humanity. I think an interaction that I that always stands out to me, I actually see a visual of this woman's face, which makes sense since we took pictures. <laughs> but it was with a Native American woman at the Women's March in Boston. And these, um, <laughs> Vinny's like, I know it. Um, there was this group of Native American women standing, discussing something. And I was nervous, to be honest, to approach them. As a white woman, I often get nervous to approach pretty much anybody who's not white. It's um, my only thing, right, that I'm going through, dealing with. But I did, and I commented on what they were wearing. I really thought it was beautiful. I tend to love um, Aboriginal and Native wear and fashion and so I commented and I just said how much I appreciated it and then I kind of started walking away but Vinny actually came on the scene and we engaged the women in further conversation, explained what we were doing and then got some really beautiful answers which you can see when you look at the project from these women and I just felt the strength, the power of these women, their presence, and it was a difficult thing for me to do, a small difficulty, but difficult to approach them. And the conversation was a little awkward at first, but then as they saw my intentions and Minnie's intentions, because we had this beautiful project and these beautiful intentions that was recognized by them, and I think that's so wonderful that that can happen between humans that don't know each other. During the march, Beth and I interacted with three women that had um, 
duct tape on their nipples. And I ended up sharing that photo on Facebook. In the comment threads, there were people saying, hey, um, this is not the right form of protesting. I don't know what this girl's, why they have their boobs out. This shouldn't, this shouldn't be allowed. Beth and I were in, a, were in this performance march talking to the individuals that were actually in the march. The way that they responded to the question of what does it mean to be a woman in America, um, it kind of shocked me. And it made, it made me see, it, it shocked me and made me see the bigger picture. And the bigger picture was that they weren't only fighting for themselves, but they were fighting for everyone, all the other women in the world. I'm taking away I think, I think I'm able to draw the strength of others. Some people, I remember one of our friends uh, answered a question, reaching out to people who struggle with depression. And just answers that are altruistic and giving remind me of the strength and the generosity of people. And that encourages me to be strong, to be generous. And sometimes I really struggle to use my voice and to see people be willing to do that and to be proud to do that stirs something inside of me. Um, I think it just stirs, I think it stirs bravery. I think it stirs something that says maybe, maybe my voice matters too. Um, and maybe what I have to say can also inspire people. So personally, it's been empowering. And I'm also just taking away the bits of love, you know, the bits and pieces of love. When you when you practice love, you receive it, you scatter it more, it plants seeds that will grow, that someone can pick and love gets deposited somewhere else. I mean, projects of love, I mean, that's awesome. So I'm just taking away the love. And, you know, when I think about that and think about um, Vinny wanting to do that, it makes me proud, and yeah, it just takes, I, I guess I take away, I take away the love. Since the URC project has ended, I've been able to just take a step back and think about all the interactions that Beth and I had over the last two years. I've learned so much about humanity and individuals, and really just to sit down and listen, and taking what they're saying, and not to project my own narrative onto what they're trying to tell me. And that's it.